Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 266. I've been doing some homework on trying to decide on which of the newer, not necessarily new, new, but newer Bofang handheld transceivers I should get for my next review. And I did a show, ooh, gosh, a month ago maybe, asking for my viewers' inputs on which of I think it was either three or four Bofang HTs I should go for first to purchase and do a review. And uh, I have um, received uh, enough credits on my Amazon store through my viewers buying thumps things from my Amazon store and I get a small credit. And I've accumulated enough credit now to buy one of those radios. So I'm trying to make that decision. Uh, yesterday and today I've been looking on the internet uh, about uh, two of those radios that seemed that most people that commented said I should give it a try. And that is, and we're going to go to my Amazon store, a little commercial here. And uh, we'll go down to Bofang Radios. I have a special page for Bofang Radios. And here is the radio that I have. And actually, I don't have the RA. I purchased the RA and sent it back. I have the UV5R. And uh, I did a review of that. And uh, the two that came out of the comments the most were the UVB5 and the UV82. So those are the two that I'm looking at. The 85 now is, uh, I, I mean the B5, excuse me, the B5 now is uh, $39 at Amazon and the uh, UV is 82 is $46. So here are a couple of websites that I found a lot of useful information about these two radios and I'm just going to touch on some of the information that's provided and then uh, try to come up with a decision here. Okay, here's, uh, here's, let me go up to the top. This is a website put together by, and I'm sorry I don't know how to pronounce, pronounce his first name, uh, Home. And his call sign is LA3ZA. And he has a comparison of these three radios. The one I have, the two that I'm thinking about getting one of those two. And he says, I'll go down here a little further, that the main sources are blogs of PD0AC on the UV. 82 and the UV B5 and B6. And also the milk or mil milk lore frequency asked questions. So this is a, a good quick summary of everything and I'll go over to those articles quickly. Here's um, a lot of detail here that this gentleman who is PD0AC, that's his call letters, has done this is a great website too and he's done a, a fantastic review of these two radios you can see where he's here's where he used the uh, programmer to program with them and he's got some outputs from a spectrum analyzer and so this is a great website to look go to if you just I'm pretty sure if you just do a search on PD0AC, you'll find his website. And he's got tons of reviews. And he also did a review of the other radio that I'm thinking about, which is the UVB5. And there is one thing uh, different about these two radios that, actually, two things that kind of made my decision. And I'll go through that using. The chart here on the LA3ZA website. So here's the chart. Again, this is the one I have, UV5R, and these are the two I'm thinking about getting. 
Uh, the first feature is the front end, you know, how well this thing filters, receives, you know, the front end circuitry. Is it okay or is it, in this case, it says the UV B5 is improved. And the article that he refers to that I showed you a few seconds ago goes into detail saying that these two guys can get overloaded when they get too strong a signal. This guy is overloaded less. So it is an improvement in that area. The antennas. Uh, this has a very short antenna. This is the stock antenna that comes with. This one has a longer antenna, and this one has a longer antenna. So they kind of tied there. And um, the other website says that with the longer antenna, reception and the distance you can transmit is increased. So you want the longer antenna. And if you've seen some of my other videos you'll, where I did some antenna testing for the UV-5R, the antennas that were the longest came out the best in the testing. Now, signal meter. This is a complaint that I have with the UV-5R. It's not really a signal meter. It's just there's a signal there or a signal not there. So it's on or off. There's no bar graph or anything like that, really. Same thing it says, the UV82 has the same thing. The UVB5 actually has a real dynamic S meter, signal meter. Okay. Then we're talking about squelch, um, VHF on and off, only um, UHF tiny steps, uh, the UV. 82, the same thing as the UV5R, and the UVB5 has larger steps. So that's another plus. I mean, this so far this guy has got <laughs> a lot of pluses here. Size and shape, square and small. Yes, it's a little small. Um, this one is larger, fits in the head, hand better, and larger buttons. This one basically is the same size as the the UV-82. Uh, frequency. Now, here's a downer. No, this is not the downer. I'm sorry. This is a plus for one of the radios. Frequency slash channel change. You know, what do you do? What do you have to do to change the frequency of the radio or to change the memory stored channel number? You use the up-down button on the UV-5R. Same thing on the UV-82. The UVB5 has, and I'll go up here to the top a little bit, has an extra knob on the top that these two guys don't have. They have the little flashlights. And I'm not sure if they're very, that's very valuable. But this one actually has an extra knob that you can use to either, you rotate the knob to change the memory channel or you can change the frequency. And this is a great feature because if you're doing satellite work where as a satellite passes overhead and you're trying to communicate with it, the frequency will change as a satellite passes over. It's called Doppler effect. I won't get into that right now. So this will be real handy for that. Okay. Switching from VFO to MR, the button. This one has a button. Works fine. This one unbelievably they took the button away and you have to turn the radio off press menu and turn it back on to change from vfo to mr maybe it's kind of a safety feature you know as far as so you don't transmit on the wrong channel but to me that's a pain in the neck i like to have a button i can just switch back and forth real quick so the UV5R had it, and the UV-B5 still has it. Band button, uh, this thing can operate on the two bands mainly. Yes, no. You have to go into the menu that changes the band. Whew. Another negative. This one says it switches automatically. Now, I haven't investigated to what that means, but that's it. that'll be interesting to find out what that means. Dual push-to-talk button. Now, what that is, on the 82 only, you can either hit the top of the button or the bottom of the button, 
and transmit on two different frequencies. T to me, that's a little dangerous because I'm allowed to forget and push on the bottom when bottom and on the top when I'm in when I when I meant to tip. Yeah, I might get it backwards anyway. <laughs> God. Uh, but the I guess you can overcome that by just I don't know. That that could be a problem. Again, I, I don't like that even concept. And the uh the uh eighty P five, I'm getting lost here. Somebody Oh well. Going on. Moving on. Uh bad but dude. Programming. Um this says this says the difference between these two new ones is you can enter the alpha tags that you want to store along with the other information on a memory channel via the keyboard so you don't have to have the programming uh, cable and software to enter alpha tags. Okay, memory channels, 128, 128, and this has got 99 plus 16. So it's broken down a little differently, but I'd never used 99 to begin with. Now, here's a downer for the one I'm kind of leading towards. The display has six, seven characters in the name on mine and on this one. I keep forgetting the model numbers, 82. But in the B5, it says it's harder to read and only five characters in the name. That's kind of a downer. I like to have nine for that matter. And then uh, modifications, you had to, on the UV5R, had the microphone wasn't very sensitive, so you had to enlarge the microphone uh, hole. And it had low modulation. Yeah, I noticed that too. Um, unused buttons as a background light switch. I'm not sure what that means, but Ed, that's a big deal. Unused button as a background light switch. I guess that's... There's an unused button that you can use to turn the backlight on and off, I guess. Okay, so anyway, here we got, we'll go down the list here. Again, front end, improved, B5. Antenna, longer, longer, and it's a tie. And we're looking at which one of these two we should choose. Signal meter, dynamic, old, on, off. Yep, this is a plus. Uh, squelch, larger steps, yep, that's good. Size and shape, about the same. Uh, the rotary encoder, which I told you about for changing the frequency or the channel, that's a plus. This is a big negative to me. So this is a plus. Uh, band buttons in the menus? Give me a break. Switches automatically. I still don't know what that means. I'll have to look into that. And uh, dual band, push to talk, yeah, I, th I think that's more of a nuisance than anything. Um, this is a plus for both radios. Alpha tags can be entered from the keyboard. Memory, no problem. I This one lost two characters. Uh, yeah, that's a negative for him. So right now, the conclusion I'm coming to is to get the UVB5. Couple... The ones that stand out is the rotary encoder, and this is a negative, big negative for switching between VFO and memory recall. So I think this is what I'm going to get, UV, UV-B5. Oh, I'm sorry for so many mistakes today. I don't know why I'm making so many mistakes today. Yeah, maybe because it's late in the afternoon and I'm tired. I don't know. That's the, only, that's the only explanation I can come up with. So anyway, do you have any comments? I think I uh, should go to the UV82 versus the UVB5. Let me know. If you don't want to put it in the comments, you can send me an email at trrs73 at gmail.com. And thanks for everybody that's been using my Amazon store. Uh, by doing that, I have a credit so I can buy one of these two radios and do a review for you. That's cool. Thank you. Bye-bye.